I am Greg from Greg's Tri Journey, and I hope that you've been enjoying what I've put out in some of my videos thus far. Now today, we are taking a look at getting fitted on a Canyon Speedmax CF8 disc DI2, and I will be sharing with you how Canyon has really thought about a lot of important elements to allow you to get really comfortable on this bike. After visiting my friend James, the Physio Bike Fitter, I wanted to highlight some really intuitive features that can make yours and your bike fitter's life a whole lot easier. So, with that said, let's go get dialed in. So as promised in one of my videos a few weeks ago, I plan to put together a video on getting fitted on my Canyon Speedmax CF8 disc. And while I've been absolutely stoked to want to go ahead and just ride it, what I had not shared in my unboxing video is that my new bike had actually arrived the same day that I was checking into a hospital for a surgery that I was scheduled to have. So after four days at the hospital, I was then back home, I was able to unbox it, and while passing time during my recovery where I wasn't able to train for about close to a month by bringing you some of the videos on my channel. That said, now that I'm able to resume training and that I got a bike fit, that might change a little bit. But speaking of a bike fit, that's what this video is about. And uh, my hope is that many of you feel quite similar to me when it comes to getting a proper bike fit done. It's especially important if you're gonna be riding on a regular basis and if you're riding longer distances. And given that I'm training for an Ironman where I expect to be, I'd say in my case, somewhere around six hours on a bike, both of those reasons um, apply to me. I'll also add uh, at the same time that many of you might not realize, but a poor bike fit is often the root of whatever may be holding you back from actually doing more riding and even making more gains in terms of speed and aerodynamics. So if you ask me, I'm all for some additional comfort and some free speed. Also, without a bike fit, my speed max can very quickly become uncomfortable and even downright painful. And uh, I'd say that after the money that I went and spent on a bike like this, getting a fitting is certainly the way to go to make sure that I maximize what I can get out of riding a bike like this. So in general, the starting point for getting a good bike fit really isn't that overly complicated. There's some immediate things that you can do at home to get a general fit that should be appropriate for your body type. And I'll say that a quick Google search should easily get you started but there can be a lot of variables to getting it just right. And that's why I trust my bike fitter to make use of a combination of a little bit of physics, a little bit of math, technology, but most importantly, his knowledge of bikes as well as biomechanics to ensure that I can dial in my fit and then go ahead and ride for hours with this giant smile on my face. So join me as I head out to visit my bike fitter, James, along with kinesiologist and his bike fitting intern, Alex, to get me set up right on my Speedmax. In its simplest form, a good fitting starts with your bike fitter getting a background on your biomechanics and collecting some medical history to make sure that all is good. After a few body measurements and some flexibility range tests, James and Alex then have enough information about my biomechanics to look at you know, the different ways in which we can get me sized up on this bike and then start accommodating for my body type. For the sake of this video, I won't bore you about all the specifics that pertain to me as an individual because, well, we're all different. And what I want to do instead, though, is go ahead and point out three key reasons that James, Alex, and myself noticed that making a fitting on a Canyon Speedmax CF8 disc is a very intuitive and really friendly experience. All right, the first thing I want to bring up will make anyone who is working on your bike a really happy person. And that is that Canyon actually labels recommended torque tensions almost everywhere on the bike. Sometimes it's really subtle like this. And in other cases, well, it's a little bit more obvious like this. Either way, this is awesome because with a bike like this, torque tension actually matters. As you can easily understand with a ton of carbon fiber parts, some are really delicate and well, you don't want to overdo it when it comes to fastening some pieces onto your bike. On the other hand, other parts require a hefty amount of tension, so being able to identify exactly what tension you need without actually having to refer to a manual or having to have special expertise makes maintenance and fitting on this bike a breeze. So having these recommended tensions visible to you 
makes that you could just simply go ahead and adjust your torque wrench to the suggested Newton meter reading and then just go ahead and tighten as necessary. Overall, I'd say that this should keep your bike in good working order for a really long time. Now that said, if you do not have a torque wrench for bike maintenance and you have a bike like this, I strongly recommend that you go ahead and get one. The one that Canyon ship with the bike, it's a nice to have, but it's not really a great tool in terms of usability and functionality. So all to say, the easily legible torque tensions on the Speedmax, big win. The second great feature about the Speedmax in terms of getting fitted is the simplicity of saddle adjustments. In my opinion, and both James and Alex agreed with me, adjusting a saddle can be really be a hit or miss when it comes to equipment that's on a bike. For some manufacturers, they make it really easy, while others, oh my goodness, they make it far more complicated than it needs to be. In triathlon specific or time trial bikes, they have certainly been known to have some more complicated systems, which are really tough to make micro adjustments on. But with Canyon, they certainly make adjusting your saddle much, much more user friendly. So depending on your level of bike maintenance experience, um, I would go ahead and say that the Speedmax saddle uh, and the mount is probably an easy to medium level of difficulty. Like many bikes, it's just one bolt or screw to go ahead and uh, tighten and adjust the height of the seat post. But in terms of sliding the saddle forward and backwards, there's two screws, one on each side of the mount, but once loosened, make it really simple to just go ahead and slide it forward and backwards to find the right position based on your biomechanics. Now lastly, in terms of tilt, we all know that riders using a TT bike like to spend a lot of time on the nose of the saddle with lots of center loaded weight bearing. So Canyon just has this one singular screw that needs to be loosened, which will allow you to tilt the nose at the degree of your choice, to hopefully help alleviate some pressure on your precious undercarriage. Now by loosening the screws just a little bit and keeping a little bit of tension on it, you can really easily make micro adjustments to get your saddle in just right. All right, thing number three. The last thing I wanna talk about is adjusting the cockpit. It is a dream come true if you're someone who is switching from an older TT bike to a more modern one. The cockpit that comes standard on the Canyon Speedmax CFA Disc Di2 is one that gives riders plenty of options to get comfortable and, well, customize their setup. For starters, Canyon has designed their own proprietary base bar, but in my opinion, where they knocked it out of the park is by designing a base bar that seamlessly integrates into a really widely accessible and also really adjustable uh, profile design uh, area ultimate two aero bar system. It gives riders so many options to personalize their riding experience. So the bike itself uh, ships with profile design 35A J bend poles, which is my personal preference for the moment, uh, as I find it puts much less stress on your wrist compared to more of an S bend. Um, so in terms of the poles though, there's this terrific range of extension length, uh, as well as adjustments that could be made in terms of actually moving them inward or outwards uh, in terms of the rotation, depending on how narrow you want to make the first point of contact with the air at the front of your bike. Uh, also, the arm cup uh, fit range has an expansive set of adjustment options uh, as well. So you can find more personalization in the cockpit and go ahead and uh, open up your chest a little bit, loosen up your lats and allow you to take these big healthy breaths while you're riding in the aero bars to hopefully keep your heart rate down. Now, where it gets even more intuitive is that the poles uh, and the arm cups that are attached uh, on the bike are attached to a bracket system that is stackable in five millimeter increments. So uh, the bike itself ships with 20 millimeter risers that are already installed. And if you watch my accessories video, Canyon also sends you the five and 10 millimeter spacers as well as screws to allow you to go ahead and add more uh, stack height. Um, so if you're in need of more than, than that, uh, Profile Design actually sells riser kits uh, that will let you find the best option for yourself. Uh, but for starters, at least you've got about 35 millimeters of risers uh, to play with. And uh, I think in my case, all I had to do was go ahead and add about five mil uh, riser to, uh, to my stack height to be able to meet 
my needs. So it's great to get started with at least a few pieces uh, straight out of the box to find your comfort. So what I love even more about this bracket system is it could also be tilted up to 15 degrees to give you optimal comfort and relief in terms of uh, reach as well as wrist placement. So in my case, I'm gonna test out almost a full range of tilt as I found that having uh, pressure in my wrist really makes it uncomfortable over long periods of time. So by going ahead and increasing that tilt, uh, it will help alleviate um, most of that for me. So uh, yeah, as you can understand by now, there is so much uh, that could be done. Um, I'll put some before and afters uh, for you here to see what was made possible for me uh, in terms of a bike uh, inclusive parts that were right out of the box to where I have it now with no additional purchase parts. So hopefully this video has gotten you excited about the possibilities that you have in terms of uh, planning your personal fit uh, if you opt to get a Canyon Speed Max CF8 Disc Di2. Uh, I know that myself, uh, James and Alex, we were all really impressed with how simple it was to get me fitted uh, and the range of accessible options that I had uh, in terms of customization without actually having to go out and purchase any additional parts. The standard out of the box components uh, offer plenty, plenty, plenty of range. So allow me to uh, once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. If it has, uh, please let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions that I could help answer, uh, drop those below as well, or go ahead and shoot me a DM on Instagram at Greg's Tri Journey. I will be more than happy to help you. Um, if you are in Ontario or you're local to Ottawa here in Canada or are interested in getting fitted by James and Alex, I've put their Instagram handles in the description below as well. So get in touch with them, let them know that I sent you and uh, stay tuned uh, for my next video where I plan to show you how I go about uh, cleaning up exposed cables on the front end of my Speedmax to make sure that I end up with a clutter-free cockpit. So if you haven't yet, also feel free to go ahead and check out my unboxing video and uh, get a detailed look at what else comes inside the box as well. That's it for me today. As I like to say, keep having fun while you swim, bike and run and I will see you later.